All right, welcome everybody to the webinar here, Austin Investment Webinar here, Cashflow City. Hey, I really appreciate you guys uh, joining us today to talk about the Austin real estate market and all the great things that are going on here. And uh, it was really exciting to see that uh, all across the nation we're seeing a real estate recovery and, uh, and in a big way. Uh, right now I've been talking to some of the top agents in the city, and, uh, including um, just a friend of mine, David Rice, out of the uh, Southwest Market Center. And we were just talking about how uh, how how the market is heated up so quick on the selling side that it, it's actually getting to the point where it will even be worse because people won't be able to, uh, even though they can sell their property very easily, they can't they is so easily buy another property. So uh, that can exasperate a seller's market. And so, but uh, you know, for those that are landlords, it's a great thing, a great position to be in. Uh, Austin's the number one job growth in the nation. And with, uh, with uh, people moving here from all over the world, in fact, this, Austin American Statesman reported in a recent newspaper article that we have uh, 130 people a day moving to Austin. So that's, uh, that's a pretty big number and it reminds me of the late 1990s when people were moving here um, and taking advantage of all the, the job growth for the dot-com industry. But now we're a much more diversified economy and and so we're uh, excited. We're, I think, Daniel, would you say it was the 14th? Was 14th uh, no, now 11. 11. Yeah. yeah, we jumped from 14 to 11. We went from the 14th largest city in the nation to the 11th largest city in the nation. And so if you guys just a little housekeeping here, you've got a, a question box down there that you can ask me questions. I won't usually, I've got a lot of slides here. I've got 79 slides to get through in this hour. So I probably will not uh, answer the questions till the end. And then we'll have a Q&A at the end if anybody has any questions. Uh, questions, concerns, uh, and, and and we'll go from there. So, just a little bit about myself, a little bio. I moved here 20 years ago. I've been in the business for 30 years, and I know I know Austin. I know every street practically in Austin. I know every subdivision, every builder, and they know me too. So uh, I and I know where to target to be able to purchase properties. Uh, over 100 million in sales, actually more like 120 million in sales in the past six years, and over 600 investor properties sold. And a national speaker, I get us. Uh, I talk on national stages now, not only about real estate, but also about video marketing, and that's becoming a hot topic. So if you're interested in video marketing, to get off topic here, <laughs> uh, give me a call or contact me. You got uh, my contact information at the bottom of it, of this slide, and I think it's all the way throughout. If you like a copy of this PowerPoint, uh, we will go ahead and send it to you, and so you don't have to request it because we're going to send it to you anyways. All right. We'll get the video. This, uh, this, the great thing about it, you don't have to take notes if you don't want to because this will be put up on YouTube as a video, and it will be. Uh, we'll also send you a link to that so you can watch this over again at your own leisure. And even better yet, forward it to a friend or relative, uh, and you know, and talk if they're if they're interested in the market as well, so they can see all the all the cool statistics that I'm going to co come across here for you. Uh, so just you know, search for Austin Investment Webinar, and you'll be able to get contact. This is all about relationship building, so please. Give me a call. Ask me questions. Uh, you know, it, if, if you're not ready to buy now, that's fine. If you're if you're thinking about selling now, because you're, uh, that's that's great too. We actually have a really good network, including our property manager that manages over 550 properties, and we have a lot of insider information and insider properties, pocket listings, so to speak. That's what you call it. That are not out on the open market, but they are available for purchase. And we're going to cover some of those uh, today about uh, three quarters of the way through this webinar. Okay, so let's just get started. Written a couple of uh, national bo uh, published books, and if you email me, I will send you a. If you email me your address, I'll send you a uh, a, a hard copy, signed hard copy of my Power Goals book. And if you're interested in the first time home buying secrets, I don't know if we have any left on the shelf. Yeah, we have a few there. Uh, I'll send that uh, to you too. The, the home buying secrets is great for people first or second time home, or you know, uh, if you've got a college graduate that wants to buy a house. Okay, so taking a look here, we, this way Austin looked in nineteen in two thousand and four when I first started doing investment web uh, seminars, and uh, pretty interesting that this is the way it looks now. So you know, once again, we're seeing exponential growth here uh, with the with all the downtown high rises and that's all the way out to the suburbs too as well so pretty interesting uh, slide that we have here here's a uh, newspaper article from last week home sales climbed 29 uh, percent local record for May this is a sign of the times here in Austin Texas now we've seen a little bit I think a little bit of a, a breather a little bit of a slowdown due to the interest rates jumping uh, and people taking a 
taking a little bit of rest also June and June and July. Well, July has uh, been a hot month until now. We've gotten some really good rain. We had a couple inches of rain, so and right now it's in the in the mid 80s. So we're excited about the the cool weather. So take a look here at the comeback kid real estate. Uh, it's really only happened in the last 12 months. There's only a few places you can park money. And real estate right now is probably the best time in history to buy. We have lowest cost of money. Actually, lowest it was two months ago before Bernanke opened his mouth about uh, stimulating the interest rates. So we were at 3.25, and now we're at about 4.5, 4.25, 4.5, depending on where you go and what you're borrowing. And and so at 4. Point, uh, uh, still the lowest rates in history. It's uh, artificially low. So get your cheap money while it's here. Uh, investment sales accounted for 27%. Danny, we need to update that. It's 2011. Uh, but uh, right now, I understand it's more like 30% to 32% of the purchases are investor properties um, nationwide. Also, about 30% are cash purchases. It's just uh, kind of interesting. A lot of cash out there on the street. That makes it also, you know, challenging when you're trying to buy a property. You got you're competing against both owner occupants and cash buyers. So, uh, so that's one of the things we do is make sure you get prepared when you go into uh, purchasing a home. Make sure you get your pre-approval letter or your bank statement showing the cash, so that you can uh, so you can jump on it. And especially in good properties and good areas, they go quick. Uh, Warren Buffett, you know, said recently, along with equities, single-family homes are, the best, are a very attractive investment right now. Uh, he said that he would actually buy up a couple hundred thousand single-family homes if he was if it was practical to do so. One of the things we are actually seeing now is a we're uh, we're seeing hedge funds come into the market and doing exactly what Buffett said. They are buying up thousands of homes nationwide, and hedge funds are doing it because they are looking for a return on their investment. So if large stock type uh, companies like hedge funds are doing it, why can't us as individual investors do it as well. So uh, I'm, I know that Maria uh, on our call here, on our webinar here, she is taking advantage of this situation and she's purchasing properties under market value in, in her own backyard. And we call that uh, diamonds in your own backyard, being able to purchase properties uh, in you know, your own neighborhood. And so if you, know, if you live in Austin, why not purchase properties in, in your own home, hometown? Uh, if you live out of state, then you can still purchase properties here. We we're going to show you some that are in the in the 140s that are on this webinar that you can purchase that are cash flow all day long. And uh, once again, it's uh, I looked at the stock market yesterday, and you know, though it's done very well, especially during the last uh, 12 months, it just kind of scares me. It looks kind of like a heart monitor. You just never know. And and when you have a run up of stocks like this. The usual, you know, what goes up can come down, especially when it, when you look at ten-year history of the stock market. And I know a lot of high-tech and very, uh, very, very savvy investors that are in the stock market. They're they're pulling their money out and they're buying real estate, or at least a portion of it, because the the thing is, they you've seen the seventeen percent increase in value uh, in the last uh, year to date, but that you know that just can be a an, a chance for it to go the other way. And, uh, and that's one thing about real estate is it's much more stable. It does not take the big swings. We have we have pent up demand and we have we have um, a lack of supply, and that's going to continue on for the next several years. So lack of supply and high demand means a good solid investment, especially in Austin. I'm going to show you some slides that will uh, will confirm that. So find out where people are moving and buy land. That's that's good old Roy Rogers. You know you know he. You know, and the, uh, the other thing is, tenants pay off the property for you. So, you know, be, having free and clear property, our typical investor is going to buy up ten properties over ten years and and pay them off over twenty, and and then they're going to have quite a, a nice portfolio that will amount to typical purchase prices of what we have here in Austin and amount to about three million dollars free and clear. And guess what? Somebody else paid paid that off. So. So that, that that's one of the best, one of the cool things about real estate is that you can own it and somebody else pays it off for you, and eventually you end up with positive cash flow. We won't get into a lot of the tax benefits that uh, that's for another webinar, but there's some great tax benefits with regards to depreciation write-offs, to shelter your your current ordinary income, 
There's uh, 1031 exchanges where you can buy more property and not pay taxes on the gain. Uh, you defer it, and so. But we will, if I have enough time looking at the clock, we'll be able to uh, go into that on some of the slides towards the end. Okay. You know, this is another interesting slide that's actually made me a lot of money over the years because I started doing seminars in California to in about where that peak is here in early 2000s, and actually this is the peak in 2005, yeah, it was 2005, 2006, and I was telling people at, in California with the blue line that, that eventually this market's going to adjust, and for those that would have sold here at the top and then bought in Texas, they would have done really, really well, and you know, the same thing kind of goes back here, you could 1031 back in year 2000, uh, but you can see Austin's market is is much more stable. You have your you have your ups and downs, but you don't have the huge swings like you do in California. Actually, right now you probably see this line go back straight up, which which uh, in California. And so the first time in a long time where both markets are actually appreciating, accelerating at the same time. So we'll get this updated for 2013 on our next presentation. So we're still undervalued. Great place to be. High quality of life. Affordable. Uh, you know, there are not only are people moving here, but companies, full, full on companies are moving here, especially from states that have high taxes like New York and uh, and and California, where it also we have some we have great uh, schools here, and so we find that a lot of people and companies are like, wow, I can get my my kids can get a a great education, and I don't have to pay for private schools, I don't have to worry about the schools running out of money like they are in California. The other thing ESPN too, ESPN just announced today that the X Games are coming to Austin. So the X Four, Games, four-year contract. So X Games, that's going to be exciting. This, the you know, Austin is the live music capital of the world, and and so it's the third coast, as they call it. You have West Coast, East Coast, and the third coast. It's live music everywhere, and you know, I mean, just my my daughter, who's just thirteen, she's turned fourteen today. She got a record deal, and she played two different live events last uh, last weekend. So you know, to be able to go out and, and play live, what what a what a what a cool thing to do. Um, so, uh, it also we have not only the X Games, we have we have the the, the racetrack. The well, it's at the racetrack. Okay. It's gonna be, oh, okay. So yeah, uh, the what is it? The, so Circuit of the Americas. Circuit of the Americas. Yeah, the uh, Grand Prix. Is it Grand Prix Formula One. Formula One race. And they have all kinds of concerts out there at that. Yeah, uh, yeah, some big names out there like Kenny Chesney and and you know some big big names out there. So also we got the capital of Texas, um, new Apple facility that's bringing in three thousand jobs. That's that's being fixed, being developed right now. In fact, if you go to Google and Google uh, Apple Jobs Austin, you'll see my video about the new Apple facility. It's actually thirty five hundred jobs, and, uh, and and of course all the music that goes on. So it's just a lot of fun uh, to be here. Major employers include all these. I don't want to read through them. You can read through them yourself. But you know, Whole Foods being one of the uh, poster childs for entrepreneurship. That's another thing about Austin, Texas. There's a lot of entrepreneurship, a lot of venture capital, a lot of people, a lot of CEOs uh, uh, live here in in this area. And so, kind of what happened in 04 to 07, we had an investor rush and started in the Sun Belt states like California, uh, Vegas, and and Florida, and what happened is we are on the tail end of that run up of investors because there was so much so much easy money out there and you know it was a great time for me because I sold 170 houses one year and 160 houses or 150 houses the next year and so we enjoyed that and here's here's why my point is a lot of my pocket listings that I have are those investors that bought in 05 06 07 and what they were what they're doing is now for whatever reason putting their kids through college or just uh, getting married getting divorced whatever they want to sell the property. So like I said, I have I have pocket listings which are these cherry picked homes are only a few years old. Um, but there you know there's a glut of rentals at that time but now it's been absorbed uh, and and we actually have a shortage of supply of of rental properties. We have a we are, we really have a rental shortage period. Um, so 04 to 07 we had a bit of a run up but but Texas and is not doesn't have as a huge appreciation as the areas of California. In 2007, 2012, uh, in, investors started slough, sloughing off their properties and by selling them to owner occupants. So our supplies dropped. The apartment rents have gone up 20% uh, in some areas. So we've seen 
a lot of people just are getting fed up with the whole the whole rental market and they just they go buy and so all this works out to be a perfect storm because you have or say perfect opportunity because you have now the builder is not able to keep up with the building so people turn to resale homes in the resale market we had uh, 5500 homes in the in the market in Austin and we had 4900 pendings pending meaning those are homes that are under contract so we're really running into a shortage of housing right here um, both in new and resale builders can't keep up with it they're raising their prices which means they're going to resale is going to raise their prices as well which is we're seeing we saw about a 8 a 5 to 8 percent increase in prices citywide from the beginning of the year and it's a five percent in six eight months uh, six seven months is a pretty that's a pretty quick appreciation factor um, some other areas that I have uh, that I've seen like one of my areas that I do a lot of business in which is Avery Ranch what we were selling for two hundred thousand in last year at this time we're now selling for 230 240 so that equates to even a 15 percent to 20 percent increase in value rents have also gone up 20 percent as well so um, one of the things that a lot of people are forced to rent because they maybe have a short sale or whatever uh, or they just don't have the credit to buy now so you know and also a lot of people are moving to the area so they don't really want to they don't really want to buy uh, right now and they want to get to know the area so they're going to rent for a while then they'll go buy something new or buy uh, buy a resale there's a lack of developed properties right now and so builders are raising their prices because they're happy because they can and because they're being forced to because labor materials and land is costing more so we not only have you know it's, we have basically a housing of investment property and and real estate which is going to be mean that prices are going up just as they are and they're going to continue to go up because we have room for for price increases this is a interesting slide that we have here and and we spent uh, several days putting this together but you can see it on the far right that our rents have gone up 20 percent 15 percent 20 percent 20 percent uh, these are some uh, some uh, pretty pretty interesting stats here and so you might want to come back to this slide if you have the home in these areas uh, so you can see how things are performing one of the things that we encourage if you do own rental property uh, if you do own rental property in the in, in the Austin area get with me about about uh, doing not only a market analysis for value but a market analysis for your rents because we're seeing some of the property managers are not increasing the rents as much as they should be either by just being lazy and making it easy on themselves or because they just uh, don't know so here's your annual employment growth uh, for for uh, Austin Texas and the US uh, we are leading the nation as I told you number one job growth in the nation here's your uh, re employment recovery from just a few short years ago here's your Texas population growth we're looking like we're going to be uh, you know, doubling our population here within well, it seems like it doubles every about, about, 15 about, about every 15 years. So a lot of people moving here. Probably the uh, number one place people are moving to is in Texas. And Austin is a little bit different. Austin is a place that people want to move to in Texas. And be, a lot of good reasons why. Uh, mostly jobs. And that's going to continue because the companies keep moving here or expanding. And so and this line is probably going to be a little steeper than... Then what, can you tell us, guys, that we're trying to do a presentation here? Sorry about that. We have some people working in our office here, so I'm going to tell them to see if they can keep it down. <clears throat> um, so, anyways, the Austin population groups. This is an interesting statistic here. Um, you have uh, we have um, baby boomers, or your those are going to be your, your 47 to 65. Then you have your Gen Xers at 35 to 46. And look at the 16 to 34s, which is the largest population group that we have. Those are the gen Generation Y, they call it. And what we're seeing is that they have a tendency to, these days, is put off their home buying purchase a little bit longer, this Gen, this gen Y, and until they're a little bit older than the other generations that, that you see on this chart. So what that means is with the largest population, being in that range, we're going to see the largest amount of renters 
that we have. So always keeping our solid rental base to keep our uh, keep our rentals full. And home ownership rate really should be balanced out at about 63 uh, percent, 64, 63 percent. This line here really is where it needs to be. So we're going to see home ownership rates decline uh, again a little more difficult in getting financing, but for a healthy market, it should be right here in the, between the 63, 64% and, and 65%. So once again, you're going to see one, more rent, renters in the marketplace. Those that can buy will buy, uh, and they'll be replaced by other renters that can't quite buy yet or don't want to. Okay, so take a look at the other metro areas. You know, Houston's doing pretty well, and, and as far as the uh, Austin area, you can see over the years, it's done very, you know, very consistently. This is this is great. As your mortgage payments being paid off, your value is going up. Values double about every 15 years, plus or minus, in Austin area. So one of the things that we like to teach our clients is if you just had a baby, go buy a house in Austin, put it on a 15-year loan. It'll probably be a break-even, and in 15 years, it should be worth double the value that you paid for it, and the loan will be paid off by the tenants. And now you have free and clear property that you can sell and put your kids through college. The other thing about these charts is that Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio on the charts, they're all capping out at about 160000 whereas Austin's capping at one ninety. Yeah, it's really the median price has gone up to two hundred and ten, about 210000 uh, The average price, which is the weighted average, is about 238000 So and the average price has gone up, according to the statesman, uh, is is 8% since the beginning of the year. So what you're, that means is that we're seeing hot, more more of the higher priced homes are selling. So, okay, so take a look at this chart again, uh, and this is a prediction. This is from the uh, Texas Real Estate, Texas A&M Real Estate University. <coughs> Excuse me. So, you know, we're, we're seeing that, that price increases, and so you got to get in now and, and take advantage of those price increases because if, if prices have gone up five to eight percent since the beginning of the year, if you put twenty percent down, you would have a huge return on your money on your investment. Let's say you just put ten percent down, you buy owner occupied, and it goes up. The value of the property goes up five percent. You've had a fifty percent increase in property value. I mean, in, in equity, fifty percent in six months increase in equity. Once again, looking at the chart, nothing but going up, and that's going back in. Uh, to 1999, and if you take this chart back to the 70s, you would see the same thing. It's just pretty much a nice, steady, even growth. We want a steady, even growth. We don't like to have large peaks when you own real estate, large peaks and valleys, because um, that that's not healthy for real estate investors. Uh, but in Austin, we've got nice stability. Our inventory is actually down to about three months right now. So if you caught this, okay, back to that counter cycle uh, sheet again. All right, now let's take a look here. I just want to give you a quick run through the Austin area, just some pictures that I put, that I took all these pictures just to kind of give you a feel for, for our lifestyle here. There's the biggest capital uh, building in the United States is, is the uh, Texas Capitol building. It's four feet taller than the Capitol building in, uh, in Washington, D.C. Everything's bigger in Texas. These are tollways that run crisscross now. And guess what? The tollway mile, uh, speed limit now is 85 miles an hour in some stretches. Pretty cool. 85 miles an hour. That means you can go 90. Um, that's Terra Vista Golf Course Community. And Avery Ranch. That's where, I think, Patrick, do you still live in Avery Ranch? It's a great area. That's 18th hole there overlooking. That's taken from the, uh, from the, the clubhouse. Um, and I think that's Patrick actually out on the golf course. You're supposed to be working, Patrick. <laughs> okay. No, John, John does live in it. Okay, so uh, that might be John right there. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm talking about Patrick and John. They're friends of mine. John uh, John actually bought his first house for, in one of the very first houses in Avery Ranch back in uh, 2000. And he, and he was one of the very first in. And now he's a real estate agent. So, all right. So here we go. There's once again, great lifestyle. Oh, and here's boating is big. We have, we have huge lakes that we, and if you recognize that island there, it's called Starnes Island. Is was in the the movie uh, Spy Kids Three. So if you ever see that movie, there was a scene where they were out on a uh, out on an island about the, with a house, um, and 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 it was quite a few quite a few uh, shots of this uh, out here. And this is in Lake Travis. In fact, 
today, my daughter's 14th birthday, we're going out after after this webinar and spending a couple hours out on the lake. So it's pretty exciting. Um, it's 10 minutes from where I'm, where I'm at here. And that's what it looks like, the big marina across from Carlos and Charlie's. All right, let's get it back into some business here. Here's your typical performa for a house that's, uh, what is our pay, purchase price? 130000 and we're looking at $26,000 down, 3900 closing costs prepaid and prepaids. So you're looking about thirty grand to get into it. 104000 is your loan amount. Four and a quarter percent, probably more like four and a half today. Just it, it went up quicker than we could keep these slides updated. Uh, so your payment is maybe $20 more than what you see in here. Payment's 832 you got your management of $114, and now you have a, a $946 total payment and management. So if you're getting $1,275 to $1,375, you're three to $400 a month positive on this property. And just a typical, it's pretty good in, uh, return on your investment. And so, you know, and, it, and once again, like I said, you're going to be paying, it's going to be paid off. Uh, if you did a 15-year mortgage on this, it would be paid off. Uh, it would probably be about a break even, and then it would be paid off in 15 years, obviously. Here's a $150,000 purchase, a little bit more down, uh, but you're still your cash to close is not that much more. It's about $33,900. Uh, loan amount is 120. This is with only 20% down. Uh, if you can swing the 25%, do the 25%, you'll get a better interest rate. And once again, your payment's going to be about a little over 1,000, just under 1,100. And we're getting for a purchase price about thirteen fifty to fifteen hundred, with it leaning more towards the fourteen fifteen hundred range right now for for that. And that's about one percent of the value of the property per month, which is a pretty good return. And so a lot of investors are looking for that one percent return per month. One hundred seventy five thousand dollar purchase. You're looking at about thirty nine all in. Loan amount one hundred forty. Total payments. Are twelve and management plus management are about twelve twenty seven, and so you're going to see definitely positive cash flow on that as well, several hundred dollars a month. What my suggestion is take that positive cash flow and pay it towards the balance, and when you'll pay this thing off a lot quicker. And then two hundred thousand, which is a good sweet spot for me, is because it, you know, I get a better quality of tenant. Um, they have a tendency to stay longer, and uh, so I'm looking at. Um, Though I don't get as good a cash return, uh, but I do get I do get longer tenants. So you know turnover costs money, and so I think it balances out better. Plus they usually take better care of the property because they're usually executives or you know but a little bit more um, responsible demographic. Okay, so let's jump into being an investor. You know we enjoy leverage and appreciation, and you know. Question is, a lot of people don't buy at the bottom of the market because they don't know where the market's going to start appreciating. But don't wait for it to peak out to start buying. Buy now that the, that we know that there's appreciation going on. That we know that the that the prices have gone up and are continuing to go up. And I can show you statistic after statistic that shows, especially here in Austin, we don't have we're not developing enough lots to keep uh, keep up with it. In fact, in that newspaper article, I'll grab it from the statesman here. They said uh, one of the economists said that they you need to have you you for every for every job um, for every job there will be two starts uh, so every new high paying job there should be two home starts and it said that there we should be at that clip we should be uh, building eighteen thousand homes a year we're only building ninety eight hundred right now so. It's, once again, housing shortage. What happens with the shortage? Prices go up. And that's what you want to capitalize on. So you got low cost of money and prices going up. And easier to get financing than you've been able to get in years. Uh, you know, it's time to jump in. One of the things we have to also understand, though, is that, that there's been a limitation on how many investor properties one can own. There's only a few companies out there that will go to a beyond four properties. Uh, one of the ones is our sponsor for this webinar, which is Prime Lending. They go up to 10 properties. So you go to, back to that investment retirement scenario, 10 properties in 10 years, pay them off in 20, you're going to be financially free. It's not hard to do, and you, you just need to know who to connect with, and that's hopefully going to be me, connect with you and, and help you get through this process. All right, hey, well, now we're going to get into some properties, some real-life properties that are available right now, and this is some of my 
pocket inventory. This house is not on the open market. We just leased it for $1,350 a month. The owner of this house uh, put in about $30,000, about $28,000 in renovations and fix-up. And then he also added a $12,000 garage behind the property as well. Because you can see that he's got a garage conversion that is now his game, now the game room for the, for the property. But uh, he put in a double car garage behind it. It's a tandem car, two car garage behind it. This property is listed uh, in my pocket listings for 149000 And it is leased for 1350 per month. So those numbers work out pretty darn well because the payment on this is going to be about a little less than $1,000 a month. And you've got a tenant in place. So uh, that's another great thing is having a tenant in place will prevent that whole fear of, okay, well, what, how long is it going to be vacant? And this was actually vacant for two weeks. That's how quickly these things go. Here's the, here's the garage conversion that's now a game room. Look at those bay windows, uh, expensive ceiling fans, great paint job, car nice carpet. This is a house you should have bought, Daniel. Uh, laminate floors, uh, nice, nice plantation shutters there. Nice outdoor covered patio area. So he did tile throughout the main areas, and you can see very clean, has a nice vaulted ceiling. So if you're interested in this one, this is going to be 149,000 and and it's 1350 a month. It's a neat property. It's in Round Rock and great schools, has one of the most desirable high schools for the area. Okay, here's one in Georgetown, which is my listing on Woodstock. This property is currently listed for 165. I think the uh, owner said that they were going to reduce it to 160. It's been on the market 3 weeks and it's leased for 1400 a month. Uh, it's only a five or six year old house, stucco, great shape, backs up to open space, so there's nobody behind you, so that's kind of cool, and it's in a great area in Georgetown, which is a great city, it was the, voted the third best small town in the nation a few years ago, and one of the safest cities uh, in the nation as well. So take a look at the inside, tenants are in good shape, uh, they're, they're uh, here paying fourteen hundred dollars a month for this house, you can see how what the great condition that this property is in. And bay window, nice big master. So, uh, if you're interested in that in the hundred and sixty price point range, I can get you set up on that property. It'll cash flow immediately. And once again, once nice about buying a property that's already occupied. When you purchase a property, it will. You will not have a payment until 30 days after the first first. So if you bought it and in, in closed on it in, say, September, you would not have a payment until November. But you get the rents immediately starting when you close on the property, and then you would get your October payment. So you really are way ahead on rents. And you, the good news is you know that you don't have to, have to worry about a vacancy because there's somebody already living there. This is a property that I just listed yesterday and we already have somebody that's called me and says they're going to put it put in an offer on it. This property is in Pioneer Crossing, 12 minutes from downtown Austin. It is a vacant property, so and uh, and it's listed for 179,000. <clears> nice property, great shape. It's a David Weekly built house, which is one of the more popular builders in town. They usually build a lot nicer houses than the um then I mean a lot more pricey houses than than this home. This this one seventy nine is according to the property manager will lease between fourteen fifty and fifteen hundred, which is still a great cash flow. You can see the condition it's in. It's in great shape. It's only a few years old. Here's the back backyard. Roof's in good shape. Lawn's in good care. Okay, one more property here that I've got listed. This is has not been hit the open market yet. It will probably hit it uh, today or tomorrow. And it is a really nice property. I think it's four bedrooms. I, I'm trying to go by uh, go memory. It's a townhome. It's three levels, and it's 2,400 square foot, uh, just off in, in Cedar Park, which is just north of of Avery Ranch, off of Brushy Creek Road. And it's listed for 210,000, and will lease between 17 and 1,800 dollars a month. And right now it's uh, it's vacant, but the the tenants just moved out. And they already have two applications on it, but you can buy it now. Nice hardwood floors, um, 
you know, they did a really good job of fixing this, these properties up. And it's got a deck uh, both there and then downstairs where there's kind of a kind of a really cool little uh, downstairs area, almost like its own apartment with an, with an additional bath, full bath downstairs. It also has a, a porch that this balcony is over the top of. And, you know, you see the kitchen, really good shape. You know, it's a nice, nice property and got wood floors in the kitchen even. So uh, take a run at that at 210000 Okay, so here's my, here's my very popular listing because I haven't put in the MLS yet. I have not marketed this property. I just got the listing signed yesterday. And this is the fourplex that I was talking about. This is a fourplex um, that is in South, hot, hot South Austin, Texas. <clears throat> so it's... Uh, one ones there's there's actually two fourplexes. Let me see if I can get the other one. Yeah, these two fourplexes, one here and one here. They're they're on the same lot. You can separate them if you want, or you can buy it as an eightplex. Mm -hmm. This property here uh, is we've got them all leased. They're 100 percent occupied. They're one ones, and then the the unit up there with the mailboxes is a two one, and and these rent right now they've got them leased to at a total rental of around $2,700 per month, but you could easily increase those rents. The rents are low. I think they're like five fifty dollars and they could go to easily six ninety five dollars for the one ones. And so you could rent, really raise the price on these and get a really good cash flow on these properties. So these are listed for two ninety five dollars each uh, in South Austin. You can see the cars there, the people that live there and, you know, decent and uh, they take good care of it. These are uh, good, hardworking, you know, a little blue collar type thing, but they're good, hardworking folk. And, you know, they take good care of the property. Most of these prop most of the units have been renovated. Much, many of the appliances have been replaced. Also, if you look closely down at the uh, siding here, the owner of this property replaced all that siding around the building on the lower half with, with hardy panel. He just did that recently. So it's that hardy panel is a cement fiber product, so it's it's very durable. So that's a great property. If you're interested in multifamily, this could be a good property for you. So call me first, Ken Renner, 512-423-5626. All right. Oh, yeah, here's an interior shot of one of the units. We're in good shape. I uh, didn't get another interior shot, but, yeah, I mean, tile countertops and tile floors. You can see down there in the corner is a tile floor. Uh, this is going to give you a good return, and this is probably not going to last very long once I put it on the market. Here's a street scene. just want to show you that mostly surrounded by single-family homes. So single-family homes around a fourplex is much more attractive than a fourplex surrounded by other fourplexes. And that's the problem with Austin area fourplexes. A lot of times you end up with a bunch of fourplexes and um, like that that area that you used to live in near Daniel, that what was that area, that Southampton Street or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the street that you just don't want to go to at nighttime. You know? But here, you've got a family neighborhood, and you've got this nice fourplex sitting there by itself. And so I highly recommend that property. We were going to talk a little, I guess we could talk a little bit, we've got some time here before hours up, about the tax strategies with real estate. First of all, you get depreciation. And I just run this by you. A lot of people don't realize this in, in real estate, but you get a, a passive paper write-off of depreciation, which means take the value of the building, and that means just take the value of the uh, take the value of the land off the market value of the property, and then you divide that by 27 and a half years, and that's how much your yearly depreciation write-off is. And so, so if you take a hundred a hundred fifty thousand dollar building, divided by 27 and a half years, that's about a seven thousand dollar paper write-off every year. If you can't use the paper write-off because you make too much money, which mean, means making over $150,000 of just grossed income per year, it carries over to the next year. In other words, depreciation does not go away. It just stores up in the property. And this is a strategy a lot, a lot, of, invest, a lot of realtors don't talk about, but you can, use that, you can use that to store up depreciation in your retirement years when your income is not so high to offset the positive cash flow on your free and clear property and therefore you would have pretty much tax free or tax protected income during your retirement years. If that was a mouthful then give me a call and I'll explain it to you a little bit better. I'm not a tax I'm not a tax expert, I'm not a CPA so I can't give you tax advice, but I can give you the the general idea to, and then you can run it by your CPA 
and get their information about it. And you can also become a real estate professional and you would get you get unlimited passive write-offs. That's why I haven't paid taxes in a long time because I own enough rental property that my income is sheltered as a real estate professional uh, to, and that doesn't mean a real estate license, it just means a real estate professional as, as, as the IRS would call it. So there's some rules about that. All you have to do is go into Google and dial in real estate professional IRS and you'll find plenty of information on how to use that to protect your income. This is a great way to protect this is the, the doctor scenario where the doctor uh, and is the or the husband or wife is a, is a doctor the other spouse will stay home and become a real estate professional and do the required activities that means the rental property they own will shelter their current high income um, that's something that uh, Maria one of the people here on our call that that we talked about when we met because she's a stay-at-home mom buying up rental properties now and her husband does very well in the high tech industry and very soon those that depreciation will of the property she owns will now not only offset her positive cash flow but it will also offset the the uh, ordinary income of the spouse pretty cool and of course 1031 deferred exchanges and uh, this is a, this is another uh, strategy of how to how to how to buy more property without paying taxes you actually defer the taxes and it needs to be done specifically. So if you are going to buy a property here in the Austin, Texas area using a sale of another property, we highly recommend you talk to me first. We'll get you set up with an accommodator and get your CPA to run everything by because you, you want to be able to defer your taxes, not pay capital gains when you sell it. And the great thing about, you know, the old rule is you can't avoid death and taxes, but there is actually a way to avoid taxes at your death. And that's what's called a stepped up basis. So what happens is all the appreciation that goes on over the years on these properties, when you pass on and you and your kids inherit this property, they get what's called a stepped-up basis, which means that all that all that appreciation that was stored up in the property, the kids now their basis in the property will be the value of the property at the time of passing, which means that if you sold it the day before you died, you would pay 15% plus plus a lot of extra taxes, but if you pass it on to your kids that they won't pay any of that, that you basically avoided taxes. All right? A little crash course on tax strategies. Yeah, I get this question a lot, you know, about the about selling your primary residence. Uh, you, you can live in your property. To, all you have to do is live there two out of the past five years to claim the exemption. And that's, that the exemption is 250 to 500. What we see is a way, another strategy in the retirement is you buy a retirement home now, keep it as a rental, and then eventually move into it later on down the road and then that and as long as you live there two out of the last five years you would then avoid the capital gains if you sold it so you know if you bought five rental properties and in in 20 years when they're all paid off you moved into each one separately and lived there for two years all that appreciation all that doubling in value would now be tax-free if these exemptions are still in place in the in those years to come so, pretty interesting strategy that you may have not have thought of. I'm not going to go too much into self-directed IRAs, but I will tell you that people are using their self-directed IRAs to buy investment property, and there's some very uh, strategic ways to do that, and I can certainly discuss that with you because being able to tap into your self-directed IRA and pay cash puts you in a better buying position than if somebody has to go out and finance. You're competing on an offer against somebody that has to finance. So, once again, I want to get to some, let's see what we're at here before. We've got a lot more to do before the last seven minutes here. So, I'm going to get out of that for a second. Target properties here is that we're looking for great properties, newer properties in good areas. And, of course, like the multifamily, like the one, four, the two fourplexes I have in South Austin. <clears throat> so, which are in good areas, great areas. <clears throat> so, distressed properties, and we're not seeing a whole lot of distress these days because people are able, the appreciations happen, people are able to get out of their houses, and so we don't see a whole lot of REOs and short sales. Had a question from one of our attendees about lease purchases. We don't do lease purchases in Texas. Rent to own, there's ways to do it, but you can't really, the typical lease purchase we don't do here in the, in the Austin area. What was the other question she had? <clears throat> um, oh, where to buy and where not to buy was a big one. You gotta, you gotta go with somebody who's been here for a long time to know where to buy and where not to buy. 
and that's what's that's what I think is important uh, is an expert like myself that's been here for the last 20 years and been and as an investor my, myself uh, that's a an important thing and place to be not many realtors actually own investment property believe it or not and a lot of them don't even own their own home so I put together your pro team these are all people that I personally know that I can connect you with if you don't already have one it kind of looks like this you know, the circle of, of an, a millionaire real estate investors network you're in the middle and then you have your uh, mentors partners and consultants I would hopefully fit in that inner circle then the next you have your support circle which is your real estate agents other other investors accountants contractors <clears throat> as a real estate agent I'm a top investment broker in town. I am networking with some of the other top investment brokers in this town, and that's where we're picking up our pocket listings, where people don't even hit the market, because we, as top agents, will share our listings first with those that we know have investors that they're working with right now looking for great properties. All right, and then of course the service circle. There's a lot of people. I have a whole full page list of all these different kinds of people that will that can help you with your property uh, and but I highly recommend that you have property management so we have expert property management I've given over 200 accounts to our sponsor Austin landmark property services they do a very good job a great job in management and uh, so their management fees 9% of the gross months rent I highly recommend that <clears throat> and they Ricky Rick and Mike Ebert are the owners of that the uh, Austin Landmark Property Services. They, the good thing too, I like about them is they don't do, they don't do sales, and that's one thing you want to avoid. You want to try to avoid people, property managers that do both sales and property management. I find it as a conflict of interest. And our sponsor also, as a Sherry Eckert with Prime Lending, you've got this information. So when we send you the slides, you can always refer back to this if you want to talk about uh, your, if you want to talk about you know financing and the different you know. It's little as 10% down, believe it or not, with Fannie Mae foreclosures on the home path. Um, the cash out refinance is up to 75% on an investment property. That's pretty pretty darn good. So if you have these guys are nationwide too. So if you have properties in other areas you want to tap into, then uh, you know jump on that and give her a call and and uh, talk. Her. She's very very receptive, very nice, and she she's she's very service oriented and wants to help. Go up to 10 properties owned. And one of the things that we uh, you have to be careful though of is what the new rules called the rules of rapid acquisition <laughs> and uh, my friend Maria has also experienced this that that they if you buy too many properties too quickly in one year period they may not want to lend to you right away until you have a, and the reason is that they don't want you to get overextended too quick um, <clears throat> but I I find that where there is a will there's a way so one of the things I would re recommend against is purchasing properties with a big box bank, a lender such as, oh, we won't mention any names, but how about B of A, Wells Fargo, Compass? These big box banks are not set up and geared towards purchase purchase loans on investment properties, and they also are they don't really have the one-on-one -on -one care that you would expect that you get from a more localized bank such as Prime Lending. Okay. So my job is just looking for long-term relationships. Uh, it's kind of Match.com for real estate here. So I'm looking for long-term term relationships and referrals. Uh, cherry pick the best properties possible for you. Um, I act as your eyes and ears. I attend your walkthroughs. I help you with your leasing, and I help you sell them later on. I find every sale that I sell in real estate is actually two sales. We have the first sale that when I get you into the property, and someday if you want to sell it, down the road I want to be your agent to, to sell it as well and so that's one of the reasons why is that I want to sell you a great property so you'll come back to me and, and, and either buy more or when it comes time to sell they open sell it with me all right um, so here's my contact information it's been on every slide down there and I'm one of the top brokers in the nation in fact we just saw what it was a number 10 in the south uh, south Texas region actually in the whole Texas region for um, for sales I'm um, a small team of people that are very, very robust. We kind of call ourselves kind of like the Learjet or the Gulfstream Jet of, of real estate. We're not a big, giant jumbo jet uh, team. We are, we're, we're stealthy. We're fast. We've got our inside pocket listings. 
and uh, we have a good network of people that uh, that you probably would never be able to get to on your own. It takes to take 20 years to put together a network of, of professionals like this uh, is what um, what I what I offer to you guys. All right. So here's the plan. <clears throat> Give me a call. We'll talk about it. I'll locate the properties. I'll take videos of the properties. I'll negotiate contracts for you, and facilitate the transaction. And I'm always here to help. Mary is my office manager. She and leasing manager and. Um, and we also have Stephanie McCord is my uh, expert uh, contract processor, and then we have Daniel Sanford, who's over my shoulder here, does all our IT and technical stuff, gets our properties at the top of the search engines. So best compliment I can have as a professional is a referral from a satisfied client such as yourself. I love your referrals. You've got my contact information. Please don't do this. Say, hey, you know, I, I referred this guy to you over there in my work, and I, I hope he calls you. No, please do this for me if you could. If you like what you, if you like what I have to say, and 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 my, you know, then and you think that I'm a trustworthy person or I've worked with me before, say, hey, there's somebody at my work who wants to buy a home. Do you mind if I give Ken your phone number? And that way, it's much easier for me to get in contact with them because people jump into this market and they start uh, start doing a lot of things uh, without their realtor, or they just pick the first realtor that comes along. So. All right, so I'm going to be uh, sailing off into the sunset here with my 14-year-old birthday party uh, out on Lake Travis, if it doesn't rain. Uh, and uh, I hope you guys appreciate the, the time here. I certainly appreciate your time and, and uh, value your relationship. So please, we will send everybody who attended and those that, did, that, did, that signed up that did not attend a copy of this PowerPoint, uh, this presentation on video, and, of course, our contact information. Call me first, Ken Renner, Keller Williams, Lake Travis Market Center, 512-423-5626, and I will see you guys at the top. So thank you so much for your time today, and I will talk to you soon.